This is an example from the breathing unit for year seven of how we can use a model to represent something living or something in science. We often use models to show how things work. It's really difficult to show the real thing. We can't just get a pair of lungs and show you what happens. So this is a good example. It's called the bell jar lungs model because this little thing here, this is a jar and you might have seen these the sort of decorative jars made of glass and it's called a bell jar because it's got that sort of bell shape we can make them out of a plastic bottle like um, um, a fizzy drinks bottle cut the um, top off put a piece of plastic here a couple of balloons there a couple of straws and you can make your own model there's lots of places on the internet that tell you how to do this okay so first of all we need to think what does the model represent? So, what does it represent? And it's represented in your lungs. This glass tube, the top glass tube, would represent the trachea. So, the trachea, I'll get to find this have a little look at this we look back to this that we started with in the first video we've got one tube going into two tubes going into two lungs with a sheet of muscle now if we think about that we can then quite easily relate that to here we've got one tube going into two tubes going into two structures here and we've got a sheet of muscle or plastic in, it, in this case in this model the glass tube, the single glass tube, represents the trachea. Remember, that's the windpipe. And how is that good at representing the trachea? Well, it brings the air in and out. The next one, we've got our two glass tubes branching off here. And if you remember, the two glass tubes branching off are called the bronchi. Well, that's quite good because the bronchi are two tubes and here we've got two tubes. Those tubes lead to the lungs and these represent these balloons are representing the lungs. Two tubes to the lungs, let's say that. We've got two balloons here and they're representing the lungs themselves. And why are they good at it? Well, there's two of them and they are structures which can inflate and deflate. We've got the jar or the bottle itself and this is representing perhaps the chest wall or the ribs. I'm going to write the ribs on here. Oh, chest, either of those. Why is it good? Well, they surround the lungs. Maybe they're protecting the lungs, protecting the balloons here. I'll say that. And the last thing on here is the plastic sheet. This plastic sheet, it's got pull and push, so we can move it up and down. And that represents the diaphragm. And that diaphragm also moves up and down. We control that rather than pushing and pulling. Um, but we're going to say that it moves up and down. And by doing that, it inflates and deflates the lungs. We can think about why it's not a good model. So, well, the trachea, if you remember, the trachea actually has cilia and mucus, which aren't shown here. This is just a glass tube. The bronchi, the same. There's no cilia and mucus here in this two glass tubes. The lungs, well, two balloons don't have a very big surface area and there are no alveoli. The bottle or jar, well, I guess we could say that this is a continuous uh, piece of glass or plastic, whereas the ribs are individual. And the diaphragm, we could say that we have to 
um, try and control that ourselves by our brain and our, we, we do have some voluntary control over the movements as well but on this one we have to move, physically move it up and down so in our real bodies it's um, a sheet of muscle that contracts and relaxes the next thing that this bell jar lungs enables us to do is to work out why the lungs inflate and deflate and this is a little bit harder we have to think about the volume the space available inside this jar which represents the sort of chest cavity now if you pull it the space here is bigger so when we pull it the space inside the volume inside is larger so we're going to say this means that if you've got a bigger volume here, the air particles have more space. And when air particles, the same amount of them, have more space to move around, we say that the pressure is lower. In this one, if I draw the same amount of air particles, and you push this membrane up, this plastic sheet that represents the diaphragm, you've got a smaller volume, so a smaller space for these little particles to whiz around in. So we say that the volume is smaller because I've, I've made less space by pushing that membrane in. And because they've got less space, we say that the pressure, they're a bit more squashed together. So we say that the pressure is higher. And the main thing to remember is that everything likes to move from high to low. So let's work this out. We've said that the pressure is lower in here. So I'm going to write low here. And we've said that the pressure is higher here. I'm going to write high here. And because things like to move from high to low, this means that compared to the outside, this is much higher pressure than the outside. So we're going to get a movement of gases from inside this structure here, and they're going to be pushed out. So the gases are going to be pushed out, out of those balloons. Now, here, we've got quite a low pressure here. So in comparison, we say that we've got a high pressure outside and this means air is going to move from high to low. So air is going to be brought into this system here where the lungs are. That's a little bit more complicated, the idea of pressure. But pressure really is about how many particles of gas are there all whizzing around in what volume. And if you make the volume bigger, it becomes lower pressure. If you make the volume that those gas particles can move around in higher, sorry, smaller, you get high pressure. The next video, which is the final one, will look at a comparison of respiration and breathing, which are actually two very different things.